Yo, what's up, everyone? Hello. How's it? <laughs> How's it going, guys? We're doing a uh, double bass drum pedal reviews today, as you can see. Um, Jared posted a video, or actually a screenshot, of all the pedals we have on his Facebook just recently, and we're going to be reviewing them and talking about the pros and cons of each one. Um, yeah, it's going to be good. Okay, before we get started, uh, monkey. We have a monkey running our cameras. It's a different I monkey as last time. <laughs> it's a different monkey. The last monkey did not do a good job. We fired Can you pass me that uh, paper over there? Make noises like a monkey. Make oh, noises. Make noises. Come on. Make noises. Make <laughs> <laughs> hey, can you guys hear me? <laughs> okay, hold on. I just got to zoom in my chat here. So Thanks hopefully uh, hopefully you guys know about all these pedals. They're all pretty common. Um, we have everything from absolute cheapest bass drum pedals you can get all the way to some of the most expensive models that you can buy out there. Um, so I think we're going to pan and show you a, a good uh, a sea, I guess, a sea of double bass pedals. Some really good pedals on there. Um, we actually got some of them from our local music stores from uh, Steve Davis, one of our close friends yes. there. He's a I great guy. I want to give a shout out to Steve Davis. Steve Davis at Long McQuaid. I know he, he plays guitar and he likes to think he's pretty good at the guitar. And uh, he might find that funny, but he's just a wanker. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> he's, a, he's a good guy. He, he gave us all, not all the pedals, but he gave us around five pedals to review for you guys. Um, we didn't have, I mean, we we have a collection of them, but not nearly like this, like you saw right there. We I just wanted to go, sorry, what's that? I'd say we have our own pedals that yeah. we like to play. First, much. before we get started, I wanted to uh, introduce to you guys, this is Dave Atkinson, okay? Yes. Now, we have a picture of Dave that I wanted to throw up. Oh, what? Yeah, Dave, you don't know about this. <laughs> what? Is the picture up? Okay, Dave, <laughs> Dave. I can't see the Dave, picture. <laughs> tell me about this picture. <laughs> tell me about this picture. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> okay. Well, who is that? What is that? <laughs> it's apparently who I look like, and one of them is me. One of them is my dad. One of them is Seth, uh, whatever his Seth name. Seth Rogen. Seth Rogen. And yeah. The other one is me with a beard. It's funny because they. <laughs> Billy Mays. Uh, no, the monkey can talk. <laughs> 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 they all look like the same people. That's weird. I actually am all those people. <laughs> I work at Railroad by day. I'm Seth Rogen by night. Uh, and, uh, Billy Mays, actually. I had to retire yeah. that character because no. it's too busy. Dave the First, drum blast number one. You are right. Dave the First. <laughs> yes. At least you guys noticed. Cool. Okay, so as Dave said, uh, we have a bunch of pedals here to review, and I just have I made some notes this time. I'm trying to be more organized for y'all. I don't want to... I made Jared be more organized. <sighs> I don't want to stutter my way He's through brutal. another another broadcast <laughs> okay so um first of all like dave said we're doing reviews on some of the popular double pedals these days now just so you guys know uh, i don't have we don't have any official endorsements okay for some of the freedom lessons videos uh yamaha helped us out and gave us a kit for that but we are in no way obligated to constantly push their product or anything like that so i'm not going to be pushing any one type of pedal i'm going to be telling you and dave's going to be telling you his honest opinion Okay, that's right. The only actual uh, endorsement we have was is Evans drum heads, and that's just because I tried all the drum heads and I couldn't find anything else that I liked other than Evans, and so I just we decided to uh, try and partner with them, and we did, and we love working with them. They send us drum heads for all of our stuff, and they're awesome. So, uh, but that has nothing to do with this. So today we're just going to be talking about double pedals, and like I said, we don't have any endorsements, so I'm going to tell you exactly what I think before uh, before we go on. Yep. Just uh, anybody who's watching who's just a guest right now, it would be uh, a great plus on your half to sign in. Because if you sign in, we are going to be giving away a couple free free bonus gifts, I guess, mm -hmm. uh, by the end of the show. But we're only going to be giving away if you're signed in and you're posting. Uh, last time, well, we're going to be doing it again this time, we just ask question and answers. We also just pick random people. So um, apparently Alex911 really likes drum, Dave. Drum Blast doesn't want anyone to sign in because he wants a better chance. So sign in if you don't. Yeah. It's pretty yeah, quick. The only way you can win... One of the prizes is if you're signed into the chat, okay? I have some questions on this page, and these are the questions I'm going to ask, and they're questions that everybody has a chance to get. You can quickly go and search on the internet or search search for, search, search for something, and then post in there uh, the answer. So you, But you have to be signed in. So today, what we're giving away is a Gibraltar Prowler double pedal. 
We're yeah. actually giving away double bass pedals. There are these ones <laughs> right. One second here. Right over there. Right over here. Why don't here? you hold them up? Hold okay. them up. One second. He's going to hold them up. This is what we're giving away. These, like I said, we, d we don't have any endorsements or anything. So, I mean, these pedals, we just went and actually bought them today, me and Dave. We kind of split it. It's something we we want to just do for the community. We want to give and help out as many people as possible. So uh, me and Dave are just giving out these pedals. And whoever gets them, we hope you love them. If you don't, maybe someone else will buy them from you. I know eBay is a good place. They're uh, great pedals. They're um they're not obviously the top of the line. I mean, they're yeah. but they're great pedals, the Gibraltar and the Chain. Sure. So we'll talk about all that later. Okay. okay, one last thing before we get started. Um, th for today's uh, comparison reviews and stuff, we've set all the pedals to a medium tension, okay? So we've kind of, we've played all them before. We are setting up for probably four or five hours. We've played all them and we've kind of got a good feeling for what's the in-between on them because we, w we didn't want one pedal to be really tight and then one pedal to be loose and then we think the pedal that's tighter works better when in fact it's just a matter of the settings. So we've tried all of them already and we kind of have an idea of how they all feel. So I just wanted to let you guys know of that. So, should we get into it, Dave? Yeah, let's just dive in. Okay. You want to start with the uh, lower end pedals, I guess, yeah. the entry level we, pedals? We basically, um, upon some of the suggestions from people in the Freedom Lessons forums, we decided to split the pedals up between low, mid range, and <coughs> high end. So, we're going to start at low end, and we have two pedals here. We have a, a Gibraltar strap or belt drive, and we have a Gibraltar chain drive. And those are kind of our low end uh, on the price range and stuff like that. And so Dave's going to be kind of giving them a whirl, playing a little bit for you guys, and tells you and tell you exactly what he thinks about them. Yeah, so we'll start out here with the belt-driven Gibraltar double bass pedals. Okay. Um, these ones, they're, they're really light. Um, actually, I'm going to come and show you a little bit of a close-up of them so you yeah. can see the difference here. One sec. Yeah, so Dave, what does the price tag on there say? 170 170 So that's... Uh, this is Canadian pricing. I mean, we live in Canada. So out in the U.S. or musician's friend, you could probably find them for $145, $150, uh, if, you, if you really want to. Maybe even cheaper. I don't know. I haven't done a lot of research. But $170 is kind of a low-end price range for double pedals. Um, so why don't you put them on there and play, and then we can talk a little bit about sure. what those are. Sure. I'm going to have a little drink of my secret drink. Is that all right, Dave? Yeah, yes, ahead, Kevin. Nice. Canada, A. Eh? No doubt about it. So right off the bat, they actually fit in there very quickly. I didn't have to do any major adjustments or anything. Cool. Okay, so let me okay. just uh, let me just give these a whirl and see what I think. I'm just gonna go slow and uh, kind of get a feel for them first here. Sounds good for for a low yeah. end strap driven pedal. I mean, you weren't blazing or no, or I wasn't going too there, fast. You no. were you were doing pretty good. And uh, from here, I mean, I'm hearing, it, I'm sitting right here and I'm hearing all this. So, but it's they sound pretty loud, pretty powerful. Yeah. So, what do you think? I like them for uh, for a lower end pedal. Um, they felt great. And that's one thing that I noticed with a lot of lower end pedals. The first thing I noticed is the feel is wrong. The actual movement of these pedals were great. The only thing that I felt that I didn't like about it was they felt a little flimsy on the bass and a, lo uh, a base of the pedal, sorry, not the bass drum. And the reason why I think is because if you look down here at the actual pedal, there's no bass on it. It's just held together by two prongs. And I'll show you here. He's, he's going to get a zoom shot there, Dave. Yeah. So as you can see, there's no bass to the pedal. So uh, as I was playing a little bit quicker speeds, I was actually moving back and forth to the left and right a little bit on the pedal. Didn't really like that. And also, I started out right away with the pedal's even beater height. And if you can see here, after playing just a little bit, they've moved on me. Can you see here? Yeah, so, so now you, they're, they're you, a little uneven. Yeah, they're a little uneven. That's sometimes the case in lower pedals. I, I find this, I have Gibraltar pedals, so I'm not knocking Gibraltar at all. I play uh, primarily, I play 
Gibraltar direct drives, which we're going to be reviewing later. But I find that, that they're not as well thought out as they could be. You know, they're, they're great. They're solid. They'll probably last you a long time. And if something wrecks, you can easily get spare parts. I mean, I think that's their first thing is creating accessories and stuff for drummers. But as far as, like, branding the pedals, I feel like they somebody came to them with a pedal design and then they just bought it off of them or licensed it from them. And they didn't actually design them and have drummers test them and try them out themselves. One thing I just noticed about these pedals here, um, I don't know if you can see this, but on the actual arm here, sorry, I'm going to balance this, right here, whoops, on the actual arm here, you can see that there's one adjustment for the left-hand side, which you can actually extend or move closer for the slave pedal, which if you don't know what the slave pedal is, this is the slave pedal. But there's no adjustment on the right-hand side. So this basically means you can only move the left-hand side left or right. So if you're really wanting to extend the arm or if you're really wanting to be fully adjustable, this is not the right pedal for you just because there's only one on the left-hand side there. I mean, this is a minor thing. Most people don't want them that far apart anyway. But if you want to have more flexibility, keep that in mind. Cool. So out of – oh, sorry. I'll let, you, I'll let you put them back down here, and then I'll ask you a couple questions. I might try the, the next ones and take that seat over there. Um, so out of 10, Dave, like what would you give those, considering they're a low-end pedal and considering the price, like you know what you're getting when you buy them. Yeah, well, for the price, I mean, I think they're a solid 8 out of 10, just keeping in mind the price. Eight? Really? Oh, for the price? 8 out of 10? Well, because, I mean, if you're going to be spending uh, under, under $200, sorry, I mean, they work. They 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 feel they six point one five Vic for six point one five <laughs> seven seven. Yeah. Well, I'm just basing it on the price, really. I mean, I've seen pretty. Uh, I mean, obviously play nicer pedals than this, but I mean, I've played a lot of lower end pedals and four lower end pedals. Those actually don't feel too bad. So okay, cool. Okay, well, I think next I'm gonna uh, sit down there and try out the Gibraltar chain drive. Why don't you hook those things sure. up for me there? Sure, I'll hook them up for you. And uh, monkey, why don't you get a close shot on me here? I want to show I want to show everyone something here. Especially one thing I've found. Let me just get these out here. One thing I've found when when looking for double pedals, and this is one thing my one of my teachers taught me a long time ago, a guy named Gio, Giovanni Amade. He said when you're when you're searching for double pedals, what you want to what you really want to look for is this part right here. I, I actually don't know the technical term, but it's this part right here. And if if you hold if you hold this and then move it around, you can feel if there's a lot of play. And actually in this pedal, in this pedal, usually it clicks back and forth when I'm holding it. And this pedal I don't feel anything. So they've actually done um, quite a good job. This might be one of the new models or something. I'm not exactly sure, but I expected I expected a lot more play, a lot a lot more looseness. But yeah, that's great. And then also check up here. I don't know if you can hear that, but that's actually in this in this part of the pedal right here. I don't know. Can you guys hear that? That's the that's the kind of stuff you don't want. In my opinion, it's just poor construction. It's like why would you create a pedal that had that? Why wouldn't you just make a bolt that? Tightened that so it didn't move back and forth. Maybe there's there's something I'm missing, but I mean for 170 bucks, this is what you get. I've okay. got the other one set up here for you, Jerry, if you want to move over here. So I'll just switch spots. Yep. You can take your mic. Okay, so I'm gonna give in, be giving these a whirl. And I'll tell you what I think. So to me, they, they, they're actually set up a little loose, uh, looser than I would normally set them up. You did a lot of heel-toe on that one, is that, is that right? Yeah. Yeah, even though this footboard is smaller, you can still do heel-toe on it. It's no problem. But um, 
they don't they, like same with the other pedals there they don't feel solid like they don't they don't i don't and i don't even think if i spend a lot of time on it i don't think i could get them to feel really good or much better than this i could tighten them up but when i compare them to what i'm used to playing like i'm used to playing a direct drive pedal yeah and these are these are single chain driven so they're just a lot flimsier they still feel great and what does the price tag on them say i think we did th these ones are 220 i believe 220 so they're a little bit more than the belt driven ones a little bit more yeah and is there a base on this one as well or is it just held together by two prongs it's just held together by two prongs here and i i mean this is Gibraltar, by the way. Nightwalker was wondering what company. Is this Gibraltar? These are Gibraltar getting, Prowlers. Prowlers. We're getting a close-up here. Yeah. And these are these are actual pedals we're giving away today. So, I mean, let me just try and tighten it up and see what I can see what I can get here. One thing I noticed actually um, while I was setting them up was I actually had to use a drum key to tighten up the bass drum clamp. So, whereas the other ones that I played, the Gibraltars with the um, uh, uh, belt-driven drive, all there was was a, a bolt that I can actually do with my hands. So, if that's something you have to uh, keep in mind because if you're ever at a gig and you've lost your drum key, you can't actually clamp to your bass drum, which is huge if you're doing fast speeds. Um, so, that's, that's weird how they wouldn't have that on, on this pedal, but they would on their uh, belt-driven one. So, Jared, you have it all? What do you think? Uh, sorry to interrupt. I tightened the, up, the left one up as much as I could, and uh, it still it doesn't feel right. As much as I could. Hmm. So I don't I don't know what to say. I mean, if I if I was on a budget, and <laughs> monkey here is reading the comments. If I was on a budget and I was, uh, and these are the pedals in my price range, I would take these over you know any other. Any other no-name kind, because Gibraltar has a good name. You know you can get replacement parts. If something happens, they're going to fix it. they got a good warranty. They're, low, they're lower priced, but they're, and they're great. But compared to like the direct drive Gibraltar's intruders, which we're going to be reviewing later, I, I don't think you can hold a candle to these. I think these, are, these aren't nearly as good. So Good to know. But yeah, great pedals. Okay, for so for I'm going to... For the price, I mean, it's uh, like you like Jerry was saying, it's yeah. still a, a bargain, but... Um, yeah, but if I were to rate these out of 10... Considering the quality, um, I I think these companies and this company that's doing this can do a better job. And so even though they're on the lower end, I think you can do better. And you if hear I that Gibraltar, <laughs> I, <hear laughs> that. I don't know. I don't, I, I don't know anyone at Gibraltar. So, but I think right now I'd give these pedals probably a six, six out of ten. And I think with a little bit of work and a little bit of thought from a drummer these pedals could easily be an 8 or a 9, especially, and you wouldn't even have to uh, raise the price that much. Good, yeah, good, good, good. So good I'm going to let you step back down here. Sure. Take your throne. Are we going to go over medium medium quality pedals, I guess, mid-range, yep. I guess you can say? Yeah, here. Next, I'm going to introduce the... Oh, it sounds so professional all of a sudden. Next, I will introduce the mid-range pedals. Okay, Kay. I'm going to take, take off these ones while yep. you introduce the next one. The mid-range pedals, we have five pedals. We have a Pearl Eliminator single chain pedal we have a yamaha chain drive pedal we have a yamaha direct drive i believe those are yamaha what's the what's the technical term flying dragons yeah we have two yam right here and right here grab the chain driven <coughs> and we have a tama iron cobra double chain which is which is actually my personal pedal, so I'll, de I'll definitely be trying those out. And the Gibraltar Direct Drive, which is my personal pedal again. So that's basically the two I play. I, I own, personally, I own an Axis double pedal, Gibraltar Intruder, and a Yamaha, or no, sorry, Axis, <laughs> Iron Cobra, and a Gibraltar Intruder. Sorry, all these pedals here, I can't keep my mind straight. Okay, so now I've got the uh, Yamaha Flying Dragons hooked up to my uh, bass drum here. Okay. And they are chain-driven. They're double chain-driven. And immediately when I was putting them on, these are um, the pedals I use personally, one thing I really like about it is if the monkey will zoom in here on the pedals, I will show you what I really like about these pedals here. 
if you can see down at the very bottom here, I'll point. This clamp is all you need to do. You just release it, and you can pull the pedal right off and clamp it back down, and it's locked onto the bass drum pedal. Super easy, super easy to clamp on. Let me give these a whirl for you. You can see the movement of the pedals. Maybe you can keep a zoom in on my feet, and we'll, uh, we'll go from there. So there's just a bit of a messing around, I guess you can say, with the, with the Yamaha pedals. One thing um, I really like about these pedals is the actual design on the footboard makes it very easy to do fast slide technique. And if you were here last week, I kind of explained to you what slide technique was. But um, there's no real, um, I guess you can say, sharp edges or anything like that. It's really smooth, which is easy to slide your foot up and down on the pedal. So it's a very nice pedal. Um, there's a lot of adjustability on this pedal. They are very smooth. <laughs> the beaters stay even. They're, they go back and forth at an even pace. Now this is partly to do with the way I set it up, but setting these pedals up are super, super easy. So do you have any, any questions about these pedals there, Jay? <laughs> no, I was actually on Facebook. I was actually on Facebook trying to get more people here. So sweet. Yeah. Hey, and, and I want to say one thing. If you guys have a Facebook account or a Twitter account or a MySpace account and you want to post a link to this or post a link to our show, we'd be super grateful. Uh, the more people we get here, you know, the, the more we feel like we need to continue to do it. And so, yeah, if you could help us out that way, that would be awesome. Jared, how much do you Hey, you got it. Nice oh. hybrid. He's a Facebook guy. Nice. Prague. <laughs> <laughs> and our computer just goes offline. Anyway, um, these these pedals cost around anywhere from I guess I've seen them anywhere from two seventy nine all the way up to about three seventy nine. They don't usually go over four hundred dollars, so I mean they're the mid range price. I think, um, in my personal opinion, after using these pedals, are the pedals that I personally use. So I guess I have a bit of a bias, but I've tried many pedals. These are a great bang for your buck. I mean, if you're going to be spending under $400, but you don't want a really cheap entry-level pedal, these are a great option. They've got flexibility on all their settings. Um, there's a couple things that they could do a little bit better. There's a little bit of looseness in the slave pedal. But other than that, they're great pedals. They go really fast. I, I've got them up to speeds, at least that I'm comfortable playing, and I've had no real problems with that. But uh, yeah, so I mean, they're, they're great pedals. I personally like the chain drive. They also come in belt drive and direct drive as well. Um, we'll talk about the differences of those a little bit later on. A lot of it's to do with personal choice, but there is some things that might sway you to belt or to direct or to chain, and we'll talk about that later. Um, we got it back up now, we're good? Yeah, we'll Sweet. turn it back up. It's not a PC there, Angoliant. It's a Mac. And it keeps logging out. We're on Mac, but it keeps <laughs> lo logging out. It's actually the monkey. I don't know how to fix it. My computer's broken. <laughs> so, Jared, I, I kind of give a, a brief little review for my cool. personal thoughts on this. Did you have any questions well, about I've the Well, I've actually tried the, the chain drives quite a bit. For the Freedom Lessons shoot, uh, we sometimes we had a direct drive and a chain drive there. And so I sometimes use both of them. And they're a great pedal. And like I said about the Gibraltars, you know, they are... Gibraltars weren't really well thought out, but Yamaha has definitely talked to drummers as they make their stuff. And y I mean, even y this is a mid-range pedal, so I think we're looking at the four hundred dollar range. Or is around does anybody that. know? Yeah, just under four hundred dollars. It's around that. Just under four hundred bucks, especially out here. Ma you could probably find them cheaper on eBay or something like that. But yeah, did did you talk about the the foot plate and stuff, the footboard? Yeah, as you noticed with the last Gibraltar pedal we re reviewed, they had no foot plate on the master pedal, only on the slave. This one obviously has a foot plate on both, which actually is really nice. It keeps it really solid. Um, doesn't make it feel like it's going to fly around when you're playing yeah. fast speeds, and it locks on your bass drum very well. So yeah, and here, hand me those pedals here. I want to talk about one thing. Sure. Okay, just just get a, a close up here. Zoom in. When you, hey Dave, can you actually hand me a drum key? There's one on the Demon Drive pedal sure. over there. Or you have one in your pocket. This is one. This is one thing you want to always test out 
when looking for double pedals. And you want to make sure that your the ability to adjust where the beater is. Like I could technically I could put the beater back there, and see that's where the beater would <laughs> sit. Obviously, you'd never want to do that, but you want to have a lot of freedom and the ability to tweak things, especially when setting up a double pedal. I always prefer them even, or I'll put the left one a little bit farther, a little bit farther back. What's the so reasoning like, for that, there, Jared? The left one farther back. I don't know. I've always tried to make it uh, to even out my feet and to to speed up my feet, especially my left foot, because I'm always playing the bass drum with my right foot. So I'll always try and make it harder on my left foot. I'll put the pedal tighter. I'll put the beater farther back. There's tons of stuff. I'll that tons of little things that you can do, but that's kind of a separate thing. Nothing to do with pedals. Cool. A little another free tip for you guys there. Yeah. So when you, like I said, just test it out and see the flexibility on moving the beater, the beater place. So adjustability is 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 yeah. one thing that you really want to look yeah, for. Yeah, and I think. Yeah. See, in the Gibraltar, the strap drive, you need an Allen key to do that. Even in the the prowlers over there, you also need an Allen key. Yamaha has it where you just need a drum key, which is drummers don't always have Allen keys on them. So, just to have a drum key, we always have a drum key. It's easy. Yeah. Come and and change it to whatever you want because even moving it from one show to another, y this might change without you even doing it. It could just be in a hard break case and have a bunch of hard rep against it and push it. So that's Good point. Great. Good point. Yeah. Okay, so let's uh let's hook up the let me just get my list here and I'll figure out what's next. Yeah, let's get some Yamaha direct drives up there. Do you want me to do it or you get you good? I'll do these ones too. Okay. These ones are very similar to the ones we just uh, reviewed. However, you're going to notice if we get a close up here, I'm going to put those on the floor here for you. The new Yamaha pedals are even, uh, they got a different design, and they're even smoother. Sorry, Dave, to interrupt you. Sure. What do you give those last pedals out of 10? Oh, well, because I use them and the price range, I'm going to give them a 9.5 out of 10. 9.5. That's just because I've used them my whole life. I love them. They, everything that I can adjust is quick and easy. Mm -hmm. I've never had a problem with them. Um, but again, that's personal. So. Cool. Okay, great. Um, these next ones here, sorry. Yeah, yes way, Dave, because I use these ones all the time. These next pedals here, <laughs> no <way. laughs> um, they're nice because they have absolutely no design on them, which looks See kind of boring. Is somebody talking to me? Yeah, someone said goodbye. Let's okay. See. Well, uh, because they might look a little bit boring, but they're really smooth, so they're very nice for, uh, for quickness on slide technique and if you're using socks or even bare feet. Um, uh, one thing here, uh, I'm going to adjust them or uh, actually set them, hook them up right now to the bass drum, and you'll see it's another easy setup. There's just a, a wing nut that you choose or that you spin. It's not like the other one which had a clamp. This one's a wing nut. So here, I'll show you how this is done. Okay, so if you saw that, it's actually pretty easy to do. I just loosened the wing nut, slid it on, and tightened it up. Worked, uh, worked pretty good. You don't need any key or anything like that. And uh, let me move the snare in, and I'll just play these a little bit for you. Sorry, my uh, mic was off there. I felt them a lot more responsive than um, the chain-driven ones because they're direct drive, and um, they felt really good. They felt like they didn't have enough power, but that could be because of the beater. If you can notice, the beater's a little bit different, and that's something that you can always get different ones anyway of, I guess. Yeah. So. Well, I love the Yamaha beaters. I like that they haven't... I know they have probably other options, but I like that they've just stuck with it, stuck with what works, and they have the felt beater all the way around. A lot of pedals nowadays are doing, you can turn around and get plastic. That's what these ones are. Those ones are? Yeah. I don't like that. 
I just like regular ones. Yeah, but uh, what I fi- what I found is the beater they felt really light. But like I say, you can always change the beater of it. It's the actual pedal that you really want to make sure you're right. um, comfortable with. So cool. So what do you think you give those out of ten? Well, because these are direct drive, they felt very similar to the other one. The only thing that was different was the response. Every single movement I do on these pedals is as affected with the actual beater. Because of the direct drive, they're, ex- they're attached right to the pedal, so it's very, very sensitive. Um, that's really nice if you're doing fast speeds. However, there's no real... I mean, I guess I'm used to chain, so it's, uh, you're more used to direct drive, I guess. But uh, other than that, they, they felt really good. Um, they felt solid. I'm a slide technique player, so I really like the fact that there's no design on the on the footboard. So, yeah, it's nice and smooth footboard. And I mean, w- I think we're going to talk a little bit about the difference between direct drive and chain drive. But I've always liked direct because every movement that your foot makes or that you make on the footboard is then articulated by the pedal. There's no slap back. There's no every if you hit the bass drum, do a stroke in the bass drum, and want to quickly do another one. There's no flex in the chain there's there's nothing it's all direct it's all just one big piece of aluminum or metal which i love yeah that is very nice if if uh if you like the let speed me just see let me just see here what happens when you yeah is there something in there i yeah. was going to mention that yeah you should get a close up of that monkey show them show them this piece of rubber right here this in my opinion is poor design can you see it this is a piece of rubber for when the pedal comes back and hits this right over here. Which uh, later you'll see the, the Gibraltar's direct drive have that as well. And something that I don't understand why they do it like that. Some pedals can actually go all the way back and touch the beater or the, the footboard itself. These ones are almost like... Well, um, chain, one, chain ones. Chain can. ones can do that, yeah. yeah. These ones, because it's a solid piece of metal right here, mm-hmm. um, it's eventually going to hit. And that prevents it from going so far back. Now, in hindsight, you really don't need it to go any further back than this, but there are times where you want that flexibility. Um, and that's not there with direct drive. So just keep that in mind. Okay, let, me just, let me just test this right here. That's pretty solid. And what about we got over here? Yeah, let me see. Let me show these. Okay, I want to show you guys something. Remember when we were we were looking at the Gibraltar strap-driven pedals? I was talking about the play in here. And what you hear? It's hard to hear without the mic, but uh, maybe bring it up to the mic there, and you can hear it. There's a bit of play. I yeah. can hear from there's here. There's a bit of play right over here. And sometimes, depending on how you're holding them, there's a little bit in here. And I mean, even in the l- really low-end pedals, I didn't find any of that. But you also want to look, and this is one thing I didn't mention before, but you also want to check the U-joints right here. And that's where that this is so you can adjust the pedal and put it wherever you want. Right? So in here, if you if you just wiggle this a little bit, let me see if you can hear this. Can you guys hear that? It's probably pretty tough, but I can wiggle, hear yeah, wiggle, 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 wiggle. <laughs> <laughs> I probably look like an idiot doing that, but uh, yeah. So that's one thing you want to look at. You'll see some of the pedals we're going to look at later. They don't have that. They don't have any of that. And so that's another thing. I think it's poor design flaw, in my opinion. These shouldn't wiggle at all for four hundred and fifty bucks. They should make them so they don't wiggle at all. One last thing that I just before as I was had, as I had them in my hands, I realized that they are a lot lighter than the old model Yamaha pedals. Um, I think a lot of that is to do first of all because they're not chain. Maybe that might be it because it's a, a lot less material there. But also the footboard, the plate that actually is covering the footboards, they're a lot thinner and a lot smaller than the uh, other Yamaha ones, which actually is not is, is actually nice because when you're traveling and doing a lot of gigging, um, you want to have as little weight as possible coming into each show and and especially when you're hauling your pedals, especially in a um, a long distances and stuff. So it is nice to have a lighter pedal. What would you uh, what would you rate these pedals there, Jared? The the dark direct drive Yamaha. Uh definitely. I'd rec- uh, rate them an eight. An eight out of ten. Eight out of ten. Yeah. I'm not as forgiving, especially when it's big, you know, multi billion dollar companies like Yamaha. Yeah. It's like, come on, get your stuff together. Get yeah. your stuff together. <laughs> get your stuff together. <laughs> okay, what's next on that? What's next on the list there? What do we got next for mid range pedals next there, Jared? Next we have. Let's do. You do the Pearl Eliminator chain. Okay. Show them this pedal over here. 
And then maybe just do a close-up of it first with the price, because the price is over there. Okay, I'm going to bring this up for you and show you a close-up with the price here. Yeah, it's oh, okay. What's up, Alex? Okay, so the price tag on this one is 285. So it's a little cheaper than the Yamaha's. Um, it's also a single chain drive. The Yamaha chain we, we tested out was a double chain, which gives it a little more durability. Um, and the Yamaha, the, the recent pedals we just did were the direct drive. So this one is a single chain. It's called the Pearl Eliminator. And uh, the price tag is 285. Hey Dave, before we start, Hybrid's asking, what do you think of the new Yamaha beater design? <coughs> well, I said before, I don't really like the new beater design. The reason why is I like a bit of weight in the beaters, and the old ones that I have on, on my old pedals, they're the complete circular um, felt beater. I really like the feel of that. The new design they have, it seems it's a bit cheap. It seems like one that... Um, yeah, just, it just feels a little bit cheap in my opinion. However, in saying that, if you have an electric kit, you can always turn it around, turn the actual beaters around, and use the other side on, on your, your electric drum, or if you wanted to put it on a wood block or cowbell. Um, so there is a little bit more, I guess you can say, flexibility. But cool. Yeah, that's what I felt. Okay, cool. Okay, so let's, uh, let's try out these pedals here. Just so everyone knows, we're doing the giveaways uh, closer to the end of this. We got a, a few more pedals to try. We're going to try and burn through it. I know this is taking longer than expected, but we want to make sure that we give you the the best information possible. And so that's what we're doing here. But so the giveaways will happen soon. Stick around if you want a chance to win. The questions aren't that hard, so somebody's definitely going to win. <laughs> we're not going to have problems finding a winner. Who's excited for the giveaways? Who's excited for a chance to win a double pedal? Anybody? It's free shipping, too. Who? Nice. Awesome. Okay, I'm ready to give these ones a try. Okay. Um, first thing I realized, it was very easy to clap to my bass drum pedal. That's the first thing I realized. Um, first playing them, like I played them before, obviously before we did this, but uh, after adjusting them a little bit, I'm still having problems with my left foot. It just does not feel the same as the right foot. And I've done a lot of adjustments to this before we started, just to try and get it to match. Um, and for some reason, I've had no real luck with it. The single pedal on my right foot feels great. Feels like I can go really fast, the beater's really light. Um, but my left foot, for some reason, I just can't get it to match up very well. And you might be able to set this up perfectly if you spend hours doing it, but for the amount of time that I took to do this and the amount of time I took to do other pedals, this one seems to still not be not be right. That's just what Can I thought. Can I give thought. it a try? I'd like yeah, to try. sure, go ahead. What do you think? Huh. I think they're set up wrong to me. You must have set these up before. I did, yeah. Sorry. I tried. I think these are, you can't hear me. I think these are set up wrong for me, but what this is what I was talking to you guys about before. Do we have a close up here, Monkey? Okay. Uh, I have a drum key in my pocket actually. So let me uh, let me show you what I would do with these. And this is what's good about having a pedal that 
you have the option of doing this. Right now, the beater for me is too far back, especially because you guys know I do a lot of I do a lot of heel toe, so I'd actually move it probably that much more forward. No, it's not moving. So to be able to do this on the fly um, in the middle of a gig or it just helps out a lot. And he's doing this only with one drum key. He's not having to use an Allen key, so that's that's very uh, it's very nice to have. Okay, so I've got that done. Let me try it again now and see what I think of them now so I can give them a fair shake. Sure. I'll take my seat back over there. Sure. Okay, so those those are great pedals for a single for a single chain pedal. You know, when I compare those to the Prowlers, the pedals we're giving away, I, I mean, how much was the price again? These are also two eighty five. Two eighty five. So you're paying around almost a hundred dollars more, or I guess maybe seventy five bucks more, once all the taxes are in and stuff. But in my opinion, that would be a better buy. Nothing. That's that's pretty much all I can say. If I compare them to like the direct a direct drive pedal or an Axis or a Nine Cobra, I still don't like them as much. But I'd I'd give them a solid like seven out of ten. So you're you're more comparing these to the Gibraltar single chain ones as opposed to the Yamahas that we just tried, just because they, um, well, I guess the price range a little bit closer to those ones. I and mean, you think the yeah. feel is more more I, I based? I don't I don't see them as a I don't see them as a mid range pedal. I mean, we put them in the mid range because that's kind of what we felt we should before based on price and everything. But I don't know. I don't see them as a mid range pedal. They they definitely seem like a lower end pedal. But they're fine. Like for the price and everything, they'll they'll hold up. Pearl is a great company, been around a long time. Yeah, I That's actually I, I actually agree. So if you have the extra cash kicking around, like an extra hundred dollars, it might be worth you picking up the pearls as opposed to the Gibraltars. Um, so yeah. Yeah, Poke was saying they're two hundred dollars US. Yeah, so the price are gonna be a little different. We're talking Canadian dollars for us, but uh, um, you guys have different uh, currency and all that. So yeah, it's okay. a little bit different. Let's put on the next pedal. We got the Tama Iron Cobra. Now, Jared, you p you play these uh, more than I do. So, how about you give these a you give these a good review here? Well, this is actually of the of my pedals of all my double pedal collection. This was the first one when I bought a double pedal. I first uh, tried an older DW five thousand, I think, and then I moved to the Iron Cobras. And there are some things that I don't like, but then there are some things that I really really like. And Dave's just gonna get them all set up here for you. One is they're always generally easy to attach to the bass drum. And then what the bass drum sits on is a little piece of rubber. The bottom of the bass drum over here, this, is it, there's a little piece of rubber on the pedal. So this bass drum hoop doesn't get wrecked at all, at least from the bottom. And so from the top, there's always that pedal rash, you guys will see. You can put some, some rubber pieces in there, or you can... You can just keep it like that. That's fine. I I don't really care. I don't mind the pedal rash. That means you're playing your drums, so it's all right. Why don't you give those a try? Yeah, sure. I'll give them a try. First thing I notice is the the beaters are very thin and they're very light. So for speed drummers, speed metal, this is probably a a plus for you guys. What do you think? These are set up very nice. Yeah. I've told I, I haven't really adjusted anything on those pedals for years. And every time I sit down and play them, that I always love the feeling. And actually, when I switched a little while ago, like these are chain driven. And, and a lot of you know I like direct drive pedals. But um, so when I switched, it was actually really hard at first to get used to the direct drive. But I know if I stuck it out, I know I'd like the direct drive better. So it's still, they're still close, but 
The Iron Cobra pedals are awesome. I'm not used to playing pedals this light, so it's a little bit new for me, but I can feel that after a couple uses, I'd be already used to it just because it's such a nice pedal. They feel really smooth. It feels like if I were to be doing 200 plus beats per minute, doing six deep notes, um, I think I'd have no problem doing that. One other thing that I was noticing just now, and if you want to zoom in here, um, on the actual beater, one thing that I always look for whenever I was going to shop for bass drum pedals, and this is something that you should keep take note of, is after a little bit of setting, you should be able to match the beater's spring tension with each other. And how you do that is by taking your stick, taking your stick, placing it on both beaters, bringing it back, and letting it go at the same time. Now, with a pedal like this, you should be able to get the first couple, I would say first four or five strokes going back up and down to be even. That way you have a pretty solid setting on, your, on both springs. It's really hard to get them exact, especially on mid-range pedals, but let me show you this again. See how even that is for the first little bit? That is huge. For me, that tells me that you got the spring tension pretty, pretty well set up, and they're going to be pretty even with each other. Okay, Goodman. Goodman94, what's your question? I don't want you to cry, man. Don't cry. Are you going to post it? Goodman? Goodman. He's probably crying. Here we go. The rolling glide or the power glide. Honestly, I got these pedals, the Iron Cobras, on uh, recommended to me from one of my old drum teachers probably seven years ago. So I don't even know the difference between the rolling glide and power glide. But whatever these pedals have, it's great. I know that they offer different, a lot of companies are offering different things that you can put in there to, to raise the chain or, or lower it or something. But... Mm -hmm. I've never had to do anything like that. So I've always heard good things about the Power Glide, but you'd have to research it for yourself. What is the price range of these? Those are around 400 bucks. They might be cheaper on Musician's Friend, but I paid around 400 bucks for them. So you've been playing these pedals for, well, I guess you've had them for a couple of years now. What would you say the rating nine is? Nine, for sure. Nine nine nine. Ten. Yeah. I actually have to agree with you. I'm a Yamaha yeah. bass drum pedal, but I mean, after yeah. playing these, they feel great. Yeah, why don't you pass me those pedals? I'm going to show them something here. Sure. This is one thing that Dave was talking about early, and it's the whole thing about adjustability with this shaft. You'll see right here, if we could get a zoom in, these are fully adjustable on either side, this side and this side, okay? And there's lots of, of ways to tighten them and safeties. So just in case you're playing and something rattles loose because it's, it's um, vibrating the whole night. These are great for that. You won't really be caught in a show with the beater flying off or, or your, your, base, your double bass pedal kind of loosening and then the shaft kind of coming closer together. So these are awesome for that. And uh, let's just do the test over here. See, I'm feeling very little play over here, but I am feeling play in the U-joints, which is something I said I don't like, but I, mean, I guess... After seven years, I guess, of use, after it seven years, it'll yeah. happen. These aren't brand new. They, hey, they have tape over here and stuff. Do you want to lift up your slave pedal there for a sec? One yeah. thing that we haven't been mentioning, if you can zoom in on the slave pedal down on the bottom, there's spikes sticking down. And those spikes are very important because what you'll see is, especially on your slave pedal, your pedal will wander if you're not on a solid ground or not on a, sorry, a solid carpet, I guess you can say. Um, so a lot of the pedals mid-range and above have these spikes that go down, and those just help it stay attached to the, to the carpet or whatever it is it sticks to. Um, make sure you have spikes that can go down at least uh, you know, a good distance because I've played on some that they don't just dig deep enough, and then they're just wandering all over the place on me. So. Yeah. Okay, great. Let's move on to the High range or? Gibraltar direct drives. Gibraltar direct drives. Here, I'll yep. let you set these ones up here. This is the last of the mid-range pedals. It is um, Gibraltar again. It's their direct drive uh, double bass pedal. And they are um, they're great. They're great pedals. Jared uses these ones quite a bit, actually. Um, so he's the guy. He's the right guy to review them. You can't get it in. Do you need a key or? Thank you, Goodman.
Okay, this is this is actually one thing I was going to talk about about these pedals is they're freakishly hard to clamp onto the bass drum because there's rubber on the top and on the bottom. So it's not like you almost have to squish the pedal on. You have to push it really hard. Like I had to, I'm a little, I'm sweaty a little bit from just trying to get that on, and then it's really hard to tighten once it's on there. So, I mean, these are my pedals and. They I thought they were on this drum last time, but maybe not. Let me just give them a try. Tell you guys what I think. Yeah, sure. Those sounded great. I love these pedals. I love the way they feel. I love the beater weight. Even though you guys heard me say, I generally just like the regular round uh, felt beaters, but the beater weight is perfect. I never turn them around. I just use the felt side. And they feel great. Like, honestly, these pedals, for the price, are one of the one of the best buys on the market. How much do they sell for usually? What, what's the price range? They're under $300. They're 200, maybe 265 to 290 on Musician's Friend. But I would give these pedals a solid 9 out of 10. There's a couple of reasons I wouldn't give them a total 10, and that's because one of them is the way they clamp onto the bass drum, which is bittersweet, because it doesn't ever wreck or give you uh, give your bass drum hoop any rash, because it's all rubber. And then number two is, like I said last time, I don't know if we can get a close up, when they come back, the slap back on the pedal, you can hear it here. That, I hate that. And so again, I think it's just poor design. Something that we'll look at the axis later, and they definitely have that figured out. So if they got it figured out, why can't other people? How is the uh, actual adjustability on them? Is it all done by a drum key, or do you need an this Allen is key? Or? This is uh, you need an Allen key for certain little minor things, but as far as the major stuff that'll come up in a show, you don't need an Allen key. Like the as far as the beater height, you can adjust the where where the beater is here, beater placement, and you can adjust all the drive shaft stuff. So it's a great pedal. So would you compare these, I mean, for the price, would you compare them to the Pearl Eliminators or would you compare them to the uh, um, uh, Yamaha Direct Drives? I'd, well, obviously the Direct Drive, just because Kay. they're both Direct Drive pedals. And But as far as like which one's better, well, I like the foot boards on these. They're a little bit bigger. And so they're not long boards by any stretch, but they're a little bit wider. I have wide feet, so I like the wider pedal better. But Yamaha makes a great pedal too. I cool. think I gave the Yamaha 9 out of 10 as well. You did, yeah, you did, yeah. yeah. So these pedals are great. Great. Uh, well, let's, uh, let's move on to the uh, the higher-end pedals, okay. I guess. Okay, let's start. Um, we weren't able to get a Pearl Demon Drive double pedal. No. But we did get a single pedal, which w you know, we can't test stuff like the U-joints and the drive shaft and stuff like that. But we can tell you about the overall construction of the pedal. So Dave's going to do that for you. Yeah, let me just, uh, just take these off. I'll uh, switch spots with them here. <laughs> 